4.1 translations. Um, the vocabulary we have we have a bunch here in this section, so it's really important to uh, get some notes down on it. And I'm going to be covering it as we go through um, some different uh, uh, problems, but um, a lot of it I will. Uh, I'm going to start with a few terms that will help us to get through those problems. There, uh, first is vector, and a vector is is a quantity that has both direction and magnitude. Okay, and a vector. Let's say this is my vector here. A vector has an initial point or a starting point, and it has a terminal point or an ending or a, or an ending point. Excuse me, I put that in the wrong spot. Let's try that again. Okay, or an ending point right here. Okay, so we call that vector QR, and when we label it in symbolic form, we put a arrow with kind of a half or we put a line with a half arrow on the top, we just get rid of the bottom part as if you're drawing a ray there. That says vector QR, okay? Um, just a initial point and terminal point where it starts and tells us the, where the arrow tells us the direction it's moving, the arrow of the vector there. So when we, when we have that right there, point R, notice there's an arrow at the end. That means it goes from Q to R. If the arrow was down here at Q, it'd go from R to Q. Notice my cursor there says when. I don't know why it says when, but hey, it's always good to win, I guess. Okay. Um, the other piece that we need to know is what component form means. Okay. And component form means that if I had a vector, let's go ahead and label this. We'll call this one R and um, S. Okay, and in this vector, I'm going to show how much I rise and run to get from R to S, if you think of it in terms of slope. Okay, so I'm actually going to drop down. I'm just going to make up some numbers here. Let's say I drop down 3, and I run over 8. Okay, that means in component form, we talk about our horizontal component. That's how much you're moving horizontally, or this direction. So our horizontal component is 8. And then our vertical component is how much we're going up or down. So our vertical component here. Is negative 3. Okay. And so if we kind of. Let me uh, put that negative 3 right there. Okay, so in terms of a component form, we would write that vector as negative, excuse me, we put the horizontal component first, 8, and then negative 3. If you kind of think of it as like an ordered pair, um, an xy ordered pair, you're, kind of, you're putting your slope kind of in ordered pair form. Um, we put these, these um, different sort of brackets in here to show that it's a component. It's, it's referring to a vector. So vector RS in component form is that. Now remember, I made up the negative 3 and 8, so if you're like, where did those come from? I made those up. Okay, just to show component form. So with that information, that allows us to go ahead and um, try some different problems here. Okay, it says name the vector and write its component form. Okay, well, this vector Starts at A, ends at B. Notice the arrow at the end of B here. So that means it's called vector A, vector AB. Excuse me, let me fix that up again. And we are actually rising and running on this one. Okay, so we're rising 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And we're running 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So in component form, we'd write it as the change in x, or the horizontal component, or the change in y, which is the vertical component. All right? So component form on this one. Notice we're actually moving from D to C this time. Okay? So D to C is our vector. And then we're going to, in component form, our horizontal component, we're going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So we're going back 13. 
And sometimes it's nice to draw that arrow to show the direction. And then we're going up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, up eight. That's our vertical component. All right. Some other vocabulary here. A transformation. Well, you're going to actually study four different types of transformations this chapter. Um, we're going to talk about the first one. The first transformation we do is called a translation. So we'll cover um, another another one tomorrow, but or in our next section here. Translation, kind of the slang term for it. The slang word is a slide. Okay, it means it's what you're doing. You're actually sliding the figure. You're taking an image, which is our beginning piece, and we're, or excuse me, we're taking a pre-image, which is our beginning item, our beginning object, and we're sliding it to its image. Okay, and so if I were to say, well, this triangle, well, let's label it here, A, B, C. Okay, if I take and I slide that, and I'm going to show that slide using a vector. So I'm going to connect this point to its corresponding point on the other triangle. I draw my arrow there. And then B is going to connect to its corresponding point. And then C is going to connect to its corresponding point. Okay. So we label these corresponding points still A, but rather than calling it just A, we're going to say A prime. And A prime just means that this point A was the Im or the pre-image. This point A is the image. So we have B, this would be B prime. This point B was the pre-image, this B is its image. We have C and then C prime. This point C is the pre-image, this point C prime is the image. Okay, so the pre-image, triangle ABC, the image or its, or its translation would be triangle I have to be able to write an A here. A okay, triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. Okay, and since the shape doesn't change, it's called a rigid motion. It doesn't change size or shape. And when something doesn't change size or shape, We call it a rigid motion, also known as an isometry. Okay? So that's what a translation is. It's a slide. All right. Now, if I try some problems here, it says translate A, B, C, D, E, so shape A, B, C, D, E, using the vector 4, negative 5. Well, remember, this is my, my horizontal component, or my X. This is my Y, or my vertical component. Thank you. So that means we are changing on the horizontal 4. So if I take a point, say like A, I'd move it 4 to the right because, or towards the positive side because it's positive 4. So we go 1, 2, 3, 4. And that right there is my new point A prime. K and E, we'd have to move it 4 as well. There's E prime. D, we'd have to move it 4. There's D prime. C, we'd have to move it for. There's C prime, and B, we'd have to move it for. There's B prime. Okay? And when we connect our, our points, okay, you have your horizontal component. Now, notice I didn't move my vertical component. Okay? So, really, I just moved it horizontally, and now I'm going to move it vertically. Here's the deal. Usually you do this in one step, or, yeah, you do them in one step. So rather than um, doing what I just did there, a lot of times, or most of the time, once you're getting good at this, you'll you'll keep, you'll kind of keep the um, points here that you're working with. You say, well, excuse me, let me get rid of that A prime. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, okay? And that brings me to there, and then I'm going to go down five. One, two, three, four, five. And that's A prime. Okay, you could do it in two different steps, 
Um, it'll take a little longer, but if you're struggling with it, try what I did first. Go over four and then plot it and then move everything down five. If you could do it in one step, do that. So I'm going to move E. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. That's E prime. And I'm going to move D. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, now some of you are going to start noticing, like, hold on, if I know where A prime is, well, B is just four below it. One, two, three, four. Okay, that point, you know what, let's make that a better point. Let's actually hit the point here. That would be B prime. And you're right, it's four below, so like if I actually moved over one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, hey, there we go. And then C is just two that way, so there's C prime. Okay, now I've actually got my my translation. Okay? So I've actually done my I've moved it my vertical and horizontal and I've labeled it A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime. All right. Hey, moving on. Writing a rule, write a rule for the translation of A B C D to A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime, E prime. So now we're actually writing a rule. Now we haven't talked about rules. I mean We've talked about horizontal components and vertical components. It's kind of the same thing, but a rule says, oops, a rule says if I have x, y, each coordinate x, y, I am going to move my x value a certain amount, and I'm going to move my y value a certain amount. Okay, so I'm going to say how much I'm moving my uh, moving on the x value. So for instance, I start here at A. Notice it's A, and there's A prime. So I'm actually going to move backwards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I am moving backwards seven. So that would mean X minus seven. And I am going to move up. One, two, three, four, five. Whoops. Excuse me. I lost my track there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. Going backwards seven and up seven. And if you have a hard time counting right here where you can't see the grid, just count up. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. So and up seven. So plus seven and minus seven. So this is plus seven on the y value. This is your rule. Notice if I apply that to each point, I'm just going to do it to D here. I could go up seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and back seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I'm at D prime. So that's a rule, and it's another way of seeing this. We actually show it uh, the the coordinate x, y. We're going to subtract seven from it, and we're going to add seven. So notice this is called a rule. And let's go back. This is component form. Two different things. Kind of related though, right? So okay. Translate the image, A, which is 1, 2. All right, well, let's go ahead and put 1, 2. Um, B, which is negative 3, 2. So negative 3, 2. And C, which is negative 3, 6. All right. Translate it using that rule. And I'm going to move A and B. I'm going to move those points below there. Okay, so... I'm not going to actually, um, actually, you know what I'm going to. Okay, we're going to move it using this rule. So we're going to add 3 to each of our x values. 1, 2, 3, and we're going to subtract 1, 2, 3, and we're going to subtract 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. That is A prime. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. There's B prime, and then C prime, two, three, one, two, three, four. There's C prime, okay? So my new shape, my image is right there, okay? And a lot of times you'll actually see people draw in the vector. It gives you a three-dimensional shape here. So if I, if I connected B to B prime, A to A prime, Notice my vectors are parallel, and then C to C prime. 
my vectors are parallel there. Okay, so you can kind of get this three-dimensional looking shape, but that's what's happening. Okay, it looks a little better if you use a straight edge on it. All right. Okay, the last one, let me make sure. Yeah. Okay, my last one here, composition of transformation. A composition means it's more than one transformation. That means we're going to do multiple things. In this case, we're going to translate our figure twice. Okay? So graph XY, line XY with endpoint 3, 4. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. There's x. And then y, negative 2, negative 5. So 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's y. Okay? So we have this uh, segment here. And we're going to graph that and its image. So that's, here's our pre-image. Okay? And the image is going to be after we do these two things. That's going to be the image. So we're going to first take and move each of our X points back one. And so we're going to do this one in red. So this point is going to go back one, and then we're going to go up two. Okay? And we're going to call that Y prime. Back one and, oops, back one and up two. That is going to be x prime. Okay? We're then going to move each of our points. Let me switch colors here. You know what? For us that are having a hard harder time with that, let's use black here. Okay? We're going to use, do this one now. We're going to go to the right 4 and down 3 from our first change. Okay, so we're now going to go from here, we're going to go right, right four, one, two, three, four, and down three, one, two, three. And we call that X prime prime because it's our second translation. And then right four, one, two, three, four, and down one, two, three. And that is Y prime prime. Okay, and there is our the image of our original line after after two translations. Okay? So what I want to know is, is there a way we could have mapped this pre-image to this image? You heard me say map, meaning is there a way to slide it without having to do both of these? And some of you will look at that and figure out, well, yeah, I guess if I, if I would have actually went to the right... Let's um, switch colors here again. Let's go. If I would have went to the right, let's see, one, two, three, and then down one, I could have went um, x plus three and y minus one. That would have got me there, right? So one, two, three, down one. One, two, three, down one. That would have been a lot faster. Well, notice how we get that. If we just add this negative 1 plus 4, that gives us 3. And 2 minus 3, that gives us negative 1. So a composition, when you have translations, you can just add your um, your rules here. If you had it in component form, uh, if you had, say, for instance, um, I am going to move, uh, let's write this in component form. That would actually be, go to red here. Rid of this here. Our first one in component form would be negative 1, 2. That would be this right here. And then our second one would be uh, 4, negative 3. If we had it in component form and we added them up, well, that would be uh, negative 1 plus 4 is 3, and 2 minus 3 is negative 1. So using that component. 
Okay, it's a way that you can deal with composition transformations. All right, well, that's all I got for you. Good lucky.